So I was challenged to make this by a subscriber here, this is a few weeks ago, I think. And unfortunately, I'm just now getting around to it. I've had some other projects I've been working on and I want to get some new leaf springs because I want to do a good job with this. And well, I'm about the best at forging these. So this is, I went to the junkyard, got a bunch of these. These are actually about the cheapest way to get steel these days and it's good steel. But this is just a chunk off the end. This is where I actually attached the vehicle, I think, which it just popped out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take to the anvil, or not to the anvil, I'm gonna throw it in the forge, then fold this out on the anvil and then start hammering the shape. Uh, a little bit about this knife from what I've been able to find is they're uh, pretty much uh, used anywhere from combat knives to, uh, well, just kitchen knives, depending on who is using them. And, well, actually, probably a lot of people use them for both, but, yeah, so it was a challenge that I decided to accept, and I figured it'd be fun to do, but I mean to do it for a while. So why not now? And it's chilly out today, so you know it's nice to stay in the shop and actually set the forge going. Get some coffee. Okay, now that I have everything rough forged out, I'm going to uh, kind of true up the edge. I got the backside pretty flat, or the way I want this is kind of rounded, which for some knives would be cool, but I want this to have a straight edge like that one. I also need to clean up around the tanks, that way it fits a little better, and of course, clean that up. I'm going to leave the blade, oh, my camera's off focus. There it goes. I'm gonna leave the blade part rough, and then just grinding the edge. I think with the kind of old, really old style knife, I think leaving the back of it rough was gonna look really cool. And then I thought about putting a false edge on that, but I don't think I will because it's not really necessary. But anyway, so I'm gonna go to the angle grinder and start grinding. Yay. <laughs> Okay, so now that I have the edge ground in, I'll still go to the belt sander and kind of clean it up, but I got a, actually a pretty good edge already made. I got a piece of uh, just quarter inch scrap. It's all bent to hell, but that should be fine for what I'm gonna do. My basic plan is, is I'm going to probably drill a hole towards, actually probably this end, or maybe I'll just use that hole. Yeah, actually, I think I'm just gonna use that hole. Open it up a little bit. 
to where I can fit that on the tang, heat it up into the forge, and then hammer this down onto it. So that way I basically have a perfect fit onto my uh, tang. I've done this in the past, then usually it's thicker because grinding this stuff out by hand really takes a lot of time and effort. And I don't really want to spend a, two days sanding on it. So I'm going to do that and hammer on and then shape it from there. Okay, now that we have our sword guard made, I'm going to uh, take this piece of hickory that I found. Well, I didn't find it, I had it lying around. Anyway, and I'm going to cut a chunk off, about a little bigger than I want for my handle, so I can sand it down. And then I'm gonna drill a hole through it, going the length of the whole thing, just slightly smaller than the tang, so I can heat this up in the forge to where it's, you know, glowing orange and looks really cool in the dark, and then shove it through the hole, which will burn it open. It almost looks like a, a knife going through, or a hot knife going through butter. It's kind of weird, it smells terrible though. And that way I'll have a perfect fit onto that, along with the perfect fit on the guard. Also a quick thing, the uh, subscriber that challenged me to make this told me that uh, the Handles of the original blades, of course, if you look them, they're generally bone or a hardwood that men carried ones made of bone and shield maidens would have carried ones made of hardwood. I unfortunately was unable to confirm or deny this. So since it kind of sounds cool, I'm just gonna go with it and assume that it was true. And I'm using hardwood for a few reasons. Main one being it's the only one I know how to work with and have a lot of. Second one's slightly more complicated. Anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna use hickory because I like it and it looks really cool once you burn it. I forgot how much of a pain it was to try and cut hickory. I tried using a jigsaw just to uh, save from having to use the uh, giant radial arm saw, which again doesn't like cutting hickory because it's a bit dull and has a habit of grabbing it and throwing it and that never goes well. So I use the jigsaw, it's a little more control. I've also used the bandsaw and that sort of works, but again, the problem is this is just so dense of a wood. I don't even really see it, but, but yeah, hickory is really hard and it makes really good knife handles, but it's a pain to work with. Okay, so I have the wood handle and the guard fitted the way I want them. I bent this down a little bit. It'll be more, probably look better once I actually shape it. And which I do, shaving knives, I start doing this where I have all of these in one and I shape them together so that way these two match up. Some of them like, you know, the medieval ones and stuff where they branch out a lot, I don't really do that. But like these, this is gonna kind of wrap around along with the handle. I'm gonna sand them together. I do have to trim this down though, because the tang is, I don't know if you can, GM's not really wanting to focus on that. The lighting here is terrible. But it's just barely at the end. And of course, it's it's huge. Uh, part way, I, I don't have small hands, but they're not very big either. I mean, they're probably average for my size. 
my hand size isn't important here. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna probably cut this down and then I'm gonna take this piece and bury it. This, this table is just as much a mess as my life is. But I'm going to take this piece of half inch by one inch. At least I think that's what it is. Either way, it's a big piece of steel. I'm gonna forge this to where it kind of has a similar, kind of a point to this, only it's gonna be thicker. And then I'm gonna have the bottom a little more rounded to kind of give it a more shape instead of just kind of a flat one like this. And then of course, drill a hole through it, eh, light, mount it on, and uh, then I'll hammer out the bottom of the tang. Oh man, I'm not saying this very well. I'm gonna peen out the tang like a rivet, so that way the whole thing stays together. If anyone understood that, congratulations. You, you can speak my uh, awkward, uh, awkward speech. This is maybe why people don't talk to me. Okay, it's because they don't talk to them, but this is why. <laughs> Everything fitted the way I want it to. I'm going to heat cycle these two pieces to kind of get rid of the uh, shiny uh, sanding marks because I want it to be a rough kind of like the rest of the build. I'm also going to burn the handle a little bit, put some linseed oil on it. Probably won't film any of that because there really isn't much there to watch. It's yeah, not really that interesting. I just like watching wood burning, but. That's not really what I do here. Except for sometimes, I need the video to be longer. Anyway, so I'm gonna do that. Then I'm going to, uh, well, the assembly is essentially put the three pieces on with uh, epoxy in the middle. I generally use uh, just some rubber cement type stuff. I find it holds really well and doesn't really break. And then I'm gonna take the uh, pommel, not the pommel, the and the tang here, mushroom it out to hold everything together, and then just sharpen it. Gotta have a nice uh, sharp edge on a blade like this. Or is it really durable? Like, this is a pretty heavy blade. Four down, like five more to go. 